Now there is a halfway house between buying the boat and hiring a boat, and that's called share boating. Uh, share boating survived some dubious individuals, and despite causing some sharers a lot of heartache, it remains a popular option for those determined to take waterways holidays, willing to boat through much of the year, but better able to afford a part share in a boat than to buy one themselves. It's an area full of pitfalls and options. Uh, here's what you get, what you pay and what to look out for. So share boating should be the logical halfway house or stepping stone between hiring a boat and owning one. But the bad experiences of many at the hands of collapsed and sometimes crooked ownerships and challenger share boating businesses a few years ago left many people suspicious about the whole concept. Despite the history, it survives and is even growing slowly once more as new, more responsible and crucially more transparent operators take up the slack and more syndicates decide to manage themselves. There are over 200 shared ownership boats on the inland waterways and that's about 2,500 owners. So there's a lot of experience of shared ownership about and I quite admire them because we see them out on the water in the deepest winter as well as in the high season. So these people have to be regarded as serious boaters. The major management companies build about 10 boats a year, which adds another 100 or so boaters to the waterways each year, and that's got to be a good thing. The ownership's crash meant syndicate members really did appreciate that they were the owners of the boats and were able to make their own decisions about management. Now, today's management companies all work on the basis that the boat is entirely owned by the syndicate members and that the syndicate has its own bank account. Now, those selling boat shares, or syndicate boating as they like to call it, uh, say it's a niche market aimed at those who can't afford the initial outlay of buying a boat and they feel they can better afford about £1,300 a year ongoing costs of a boat share rather than the £7,000 a year they estimate it costs you to own a boat. So about 15-20% of share boaters go on to their ultimate goal of owning their own boat. But the collapse of those large firms meant that the share, boat, oh, the share owners now must clearly understand that even if one of their management company hit the, hits the buffers, the syndicate will carry on cruising. There's a film there somewhere. Um, so the management of the new companies um, try to reassure companies, uh, the, the shareholders, that um, the only thing they'll lose will be a, maybe a month's management fees. So it's still growing slowly, but um, a family of four would pay about 1500 two grand, I suppose, for a week's high season hire of a four berth narrowboat. So if you know you want a holiday on the waterways every year for the next decade or so, then having the use of a cared for and modern boat for three or four weeks a year for the same sort of money makes a lot of sense. Of course, if you have um, the money to buy into a new syndicate, you can own a new boat, or you can buy a, a pre-existing share for about two and a half grand. A new one would cost you seven to ten. Bear in mind, of course, that your own share will depreciate in the same way, although well-cared-for boats have a long life. Unless you're going into a self-managed syndicate, you'll probably use a management company, and their fees, about £500 a year, have to be added to those ongoing costs. But of course, boating isn't predictable, and those annual costs can suddenly increase. If your boat needs a, a full repaint, or a new engine, or substantial steel work. True of any boat. However, the share boat operators like to point out that whilst BOAT may still stand for bring out another thousand, to the owner of a 112th share that's just £83.33. pence. Now I know some dismiss boat share as a, a form of time share, but the key difference is you're not buying a right to use, you're actually buying the boat, or at least part of it, and with that comes both rights and responsibilities. Most syndicates have about a dozen owners, enough to give each four weeks on the vessel each year with another four weeks over for 
maintenance and other essential work. Owners usually get at least four weeks holiday on their boats each year and syndicates have agreements you'll sign which set out your responsibilities, filling up with diesel, topping up the water, getting a pump out, as well as cleaning the boat before handing over to the next owner. Although some contract out the cleaning and even complete turnaround to the marina where the boat's based. Now the agreement also sets out what damage or repairs are covered by the syndicate or insurance and what will fall to the owner during their weeks on board. Big decisions like repaints, new engines, changing moorings are usually made at annual meetings and the rules usually specify a 75% majority for selling the boat completely. And there's the rub. With or without using a management company, you have to be willing and able to get along with the other owners and to accept the inevitable compromises majority decisions create. I've come across joint owners, share owners complaining about fellow syndicate members who think they're the only ones who own the boat. One older couple had bought a share after selling their own boat and couldn't understand why the others had insisted on a cratch cover. In fact, they enlisted my help in removing it for their holiday. But buying a boat share will oblige you to negotiate the politics of a group of strangers, all of whom may expect something different from their purchase. Most comp complicated of all is the sharing of weeks, but at least there are established, if sometimes complex, systems. Under the draw system, the year is divided into four seasons, and at the annual meeting, owners draw weeks at random for each season. Once that's complete, they can swap them amongst themselves. Unwanted weeks can be used by other owners. Uh, the list system then, it puts uh, owners in a set sequence and the first choice of weeks goes to those at the top of the list and then so on down. And each year the two owners at the top of the list move to the bottom. Some have special, more expensive shares which give privileged rights to school holidays weeks. Others just um, find it easier for owners to cooperate by swapping school holiday weeks with those who prefer to go boating out of school holiday times. If you're convinced boat share may be the next step towards becoming a boater, you can buy or sell one using one of the share brokerage firms, although some will only sell shares in vessels they've built and uh, manage, others will sell them on behalf of a member of any syndicate, so uh, you get a wider choice of second-hand shares. Uh, there are also specialist websites and you'll even find them on eBay, but make sure you're paying the market rate and that you can see exactly what you're committing to. You need to understand the true value of the boat you're buying into, especially at a time when prices are depressed. And that applies to new build boats by management companies as well as what, uh, what would a, a private buyer pay for the a boat of similar length and specification. Uh, you need to be happy that you'll be able to keep track not only of where your money is going, but also that the finances of the entire, the entire syndicate are on an even keel and every member is paying their way. And that means unfettered, regular access to the boat's bank account. Whether you should go self-managed or pay for a management firm to operate the syndicate is still a difficult question to answer. One couple I met had a share in two ex-ownerships boats, uh, one self-managed um, and the other managed uh, in, by, by uh, a management firm. Um, they reckon it's a balance of cost against convenience and point out that much depends on the quality of the syndicate members in a self-managed setup. And that's echoed by uh, the people who deal with these boats. And Simon Jenkins has had between two and 25 share boats here over the past few years. And he says that while some syndicates are very well managed, they plan ahead, recognise the work and expenditure needed to keep the boat running well and looking good. Others, especially with older boats, tend to get away with as little spend as possible, just like private boat owners, really. Um, and the vessels go downhill, of course, as a result. But despite that, it's a, it's a good way of getting out onto the canals, and for some people, it's a halfway house between hiring and full ownership.
I suspect don't share as a niche market. To become a, a part owner, you'll need to be an enthusiastic boater, have a lump sum about you to make the initial purchase and be happy to commit to spending that lump every year. Um, if you want different sorts of holidays, then you probably won't be for you. And of course, you will um, may be happier with high, taking a hire boat holiday because you can do that when you want to do it and you're locked in for the next year or two years or five years. So, if equally on the other side, if you want to spend every spare moment on the water, then a share boat's not going to give you quite what you want. Um, Whichever way you go, you need to take precautions. This, this industry has been, doesn't have a, a, a good reputation in the past, although it is massively improved now. Um, whatever you do, have fun. <laughs>